pass over to our wonderful presenter today, Professor Akta Kalam. Akta, over to you. Good day to all of you. Um, this is Akhtar here. Um, just to give you a bit of background about myself. Caroline, can you hear me all right? Perfectly, Akhtar. Good. Um, just to give you a bit of background about myself, and I don't want to do, to do too much. Uh, I work at uh, a number of places, and uh, EIT is one of them, uh, where I'm the chair of the academic board. Uh, my area is um, very wide. Normally, I'm, I'm an engineer by profession, as you can see from my qualification. And, um, but I do a lot of work outside engineering too. Uh, I have a um, fellowship of many of the engineering institutions, and I'm a life member of IEEE. Uh, at, in the academic board, my vision is to provide exciting higher education science and engineering courses. Not only courses, but to do research, consultancy, and collaborate in development work of the industry and communities within Australia and beyond. And, and that is what my, my driving force is. And the picture that you see is uh, really when I was about 200 years ago, when I was young, now I'm old and um, uh, I've lost my, my youth and my handsomeness. I've become old and haggard. And, and you can see me in the video. That's why it's very nice, small video that is there. Now, coming back to my presentation. This presentation is a pretty interesting one. Reason being is interesting is that every city in the world wants to become a smart city. And, and my suggestion to you is be patient. Be patient because um, um, try and learn from others before you actually become a smart city. And there's a very nice Arabic saying that God is with those who have patience. So please be patient. And your city will also become a smart city in the future. So now, I, I know cities consist of the cities itself the business, the citizens. But smart cities means different things to different stakeholders. It, you know, everyone says that uh, their own definitions of smart cities, right? But there is element of difference. You will find, I've seen accountants talking about smart cities. I've seen engineers talking about in smart cities. The other day I saw someone from social science talking about smart cities. It's the same topic, smart cities, but each of them have been handling in a different way. Today I will give you an engineering perspective to smart cities. So my first question is that, what is a smart city? And, and that's an interesting one. What is a smart city? Basically, by smart cities, I mean that you are involving a lot of ICT, which is information, communication, and technology, and you're using that to develop, deploy, and promote in order to develop the practices which is, which is sustainable, and that can address the challenge of the urban society today. So when we talk about smart cities, three things come in my mind. First thing is that it's an intelligent network. And this network is connected objects and machines. And they are transmitting data. And the data they are transmitting is using wireless technology. And nowadays, everyone is using cloud. Mm. That's my first thing. The second is, this cloud-based IoT applications 
receives, analyzes, and manages data. And all that is done in real time. That's an important thing. It is not on something that is done later on, analyzed later on. It's done there and then. And this helps and assists the municipalities, councils, enterprises, and every other part of the population so that they can come up with a fantastic decision. And fundamentally, it can improve our life. And by improving our life, I'm talking about quality of life. The third thing which is very important, and that is the most important thing, and that is collaboration. I think every one, whether it's the government, the private sector, the community, all of us have to work together to make our city smart. So no one can say that they have got prime responsibility. Everyone is equal and they all want to make sure that we make and be able to overcome the challenges that is faced by any urban society. Okay, so what does it provide? First of all, uh, let us see what it provides and, and uh, in three parts we were talking about, I'm talking about the cities, the businesses, and the citizens. As far as the cities are concerned, naturally we're talking about efficiency. We're talking about sustainability. We're looking at very good decision making. As far as businesses are concerned, the most important thing I believe is transparency, then efficiency, and now, we are living in a competitive world. Everywhere, there has to be competition. So it must be a competitive environment that we work in. For citizens, it provides inclusiveness, services, and quality life. And it's important that citizens be equal part to building this a smart city. It's not only the realm of the cities and the businesses, but the citizens are the one of the most important pillars as far as smart city is concerned. So now, I normally would have, because of time I don't do that, I normally have a polling at this time, and I ask people, there are two options you have. One is, are you ready to transform? Are you ready to transform the way you work, live, and play? Or are you overhyped and underdelivered? Are you in such a condition that your expectations is much more higher and the society or the communities or the businesses or the cities or your citizens cannot supply you that thing. That means they are failing in their deliverable. As far as I think, the reality, however, is, and this is what we must see, smart cities are normally, I have found, they're very complicated. And I'll show you some examples. And it's very frustrating and it could be overhyped. But whether we like it or not, although they are very complicated, just like this child is very complicated, this child is frustrated, his expectations is very high, but this is the future, my friend, not me. So smart cities are the future. Now, if you look at three figures that I've got, 2023, 20, 24, and 25, the forecasts are different by different uh, consultants. And that is anything between $190 billion to about $3,180 billion. So what happens is that 
there's going to be substantial amount of money being spent to build smart cities. So we talk about big bucks. So big fundings to come. And this funding cannot be provided only by the government. So according to the ABI research, the best selling phone that you have in the 2003 was Nokia. But now we are looking at 5G phones. And this 5G is going to look at connected cities and that will deliver and generate $17 trillion worth of economic growth by 2035. It's a huge amount of forecast is there from the market with big bucks coming in. As I told you, there's always the hype. And this is my first takeaway. There's always that hype that we have, right? Uh, first of all, when we talk about the citizens, the citizens are engaged with smart city or ecosystems in various ways. They're using smartphones, they're using mobile devices, connected cars and homes. Pairing all these devices and data with the city's physical infrastructure and services is going to cost us a fortune. But no doubt about it, it's going to improve our sustainability. Our communities can improve energy distribution. They streamline trash collection decrease traffic congestion and even improve air quality all that can be done with the help of iot so a major part of any system which has the smart city framework includes a network of connected objects and technologies that wirelessly communicate data for storage and where else do you store it but in virtual cloud so you find that cloud-based applications analyzes this data in real time to make decisions which are going to improve quality of life for citizens and protect the natural environment. The people who live in or frequent smart cities contribute to this data collection and they use various devices, as I told you, smartphones, smart cars, smart electronic devices, and they are living in smart homes, and their workforce force and workplace is also very smart. So the, the hype is already there, my friends. The hype is already there. So my question is, is, why smart cities are needed? First of all, as we know, many of the population, okay, uh, who were living outside the urban area are going to move to the urban areas. So by two, 2050, about 13% more population will move to urban areas. You will see 90 million people will be moving to urban area, the ASEAN region, by 2030. In China, in 2050, by 2050, 255 million people will move there. In India, 416 million people will move to urban areas by 2050. Where are we going to house these many people in the urban areas unless and until we think right now of making sure that we have the infrastructure and the provision that they can last? So let us see the impact of urbanization. And, and you can see this this cloud formation that you see. You see this congestion. The infrastructure is absolutely unstrained. You look at congestion which is increasing. A 
affordable housing is no longer there the socio economic equality is in the rise and the most important thing you see all this pollution this is what urbanization is bringing to our present society and our society cannot cope up with that now what will happen in 2050 when we're talking about strategies these are still in early days i do know that 153 cities have already published a smart city strategy 15 of the strategy includes targets and initiatives and eight of the strategy includes implementation so there is a huge challenge my friends and it's a very very difficult climb now if you look at it my first challenge my friend before coming to first challenge let me just tell you which cities can you consider to be smart i do remember in 1974 los angeles became the first city to implement an urban big data project however the first truly smart cities only appeared 20 years later and that was not in united states it was in netherlands in amsterdam when in Amsterdam, the government created a virtual digital city. They called it the digital stud. And that was primarily set up to promote internet usage amongst its citizens. And since the 90s, I know dozens of cities worldwide have laid claim of becoming smart. The most regular cited one that you see in the newspapers and other journals are Barcelona, Columbus, Ohio, Copenhagen, Dubai, Dublin, Kiev, London, Madrid, Manchester, Milan, Milton Keynes, Moscow, New York, Santa Cruz, Santander, Shanghai, Singapore, Stockholm, and Taipei. If you look carefully, about these cities most of these cities are very complicated my friends and let us take the example of shanghai shanghai has 24 million people they have got 33 government agencies there's 16 districts over there they've got 99 sub district committees they've got three counties and they've got 205 towns they formulated a project management program management office where they broke down the silos they captured the needs of the city and the citizen they engaged vendors and they used this point of contact we call it POCs they use a single point of contact they had stakeholder management and they had the delivery management Challenge number two, and that's a very important thing, cultural. This is a big challenge. This is very difficult, my friends, to overcome cultural challenges could be quite a difficult issue. And this was said by someone from Taipei when they were talking about smart Taipei. When they said very clearly that culture is the first thing you need to deal with when you want to implement something different so look at that culture anything different in the public sector if you want to do anything different culture is the first thing that you do technology is the easy part there's no problem with technology we can solve the technology part how do we resolve the culture issue
let us see the third challenge. The third challenge is governance. In the governance factor, I'm going to Tokyo and tell you that in Tokyo, they had a project management. They called it New Tokyo, a new tomorrow. They had 360 policy target and they worked over four years for each of these targets to be fulfilled. They had incident management in which there was track and resolve issues of crime, fire, flooding, and illegal rubbish dumping. Citizens report 4,000 incidents daily, which includes illegal parking, damage, etc. Then we heard about Jakarta to become a smart city. So, the other thing is the ecosystem. So which case am I going to use? What are the technologies? I told you technology is easy, but what, what cases are I going to use? Who are going to be your vendors? These are the Internet of Things. You've got data, the connectivity, the platform, the application. So you've got all that sorted out. The important thing is how to get the securities there. So you have got this issue that is with you. The fifth challenge is vendor ecosystem. And the vendor ecosystem is fragmented. I know there are thousands of vendors and everyone says they are the best. They have the best device. They have the best network. They have the best platform. But who can we use as a strategic partner? That is a million dollar question. Because there's so much fragmentation. Then the funding. My friend, there is no unlimited pool. Government definitely does not have that funding. So you have to have a proof of concept model. We're going to challenge CapEx with an OPEX. So capital expenditure with an operation expenditure. And one of the things that you might like to see is money not only coming from the public, but also from the private. So this is what we call the PPP model. That is public-private partnership, where there is the partnership will consist of the operational maintenance, the designing and building, then the design, build and operate scheme, the build, transfer, operate scheme, build, own and operate and leasing scheme. So it's all the scheme, the boo scheme, the boot scheme, whatever schemes you have got in mind, it can be done with a proper partnership with the private enterprise. Now, the size. It's very important that we, when we look at a, a good private and public partnership, the size has to be such that uh, there must be a good size and a not so good size. Let us see the good side. When Alibaba and Hangzhou were the city brain, at that time, Hangzhou was China's fifth most congested city. So the city brain of Hangzhou, they leveraged intersection cameras, GPS data from public transport, etc. And they coordinated 1,000 plus spotlights stoplight so that they can ease the traffic after doing that instead of fifth most congested city it became 57th most congested city so now they're developing similar thing in macau shuju shanghai Dungai, Chongung, and kuala lumpur and they're not so good size when you're looking at private and public partnership, 
there is so many initiatives only that much can be done which is less than 15 percent many of the ppps have been shelved because the government just can't take it up so in 2018 there was thoughts that the value would be 2.7 trillion dollars but in fact only 360 billion dollars could be mandated to 2407 projects only which is about 15 percent of the project that was scheduled to take place so my friends who is the problem it is not the technology but you and me are the problem we are the problem we are the greatest challenge so this is my second takeaway so and believe me my friend one of the biggest issues that we have today is security if you look at london there was 109 million cyber attack in past few years the cyber attacks were in Kew Gardens, Imperial War Museum, the Tate Gallery, and National History Museum. There were 82 million, 75% of them were spyware attacks, and they were targeting confidential information. In Singapore, 1.5 million patient medical records were leaked. 800,000 blood donors were there, 14,200 HIV positive residents informations were leaked out of a population of 5.6 million people in malaysia which has in contrast six times more population they had 46 million mobile subscriber data was leaked by the communication and multimedia committee commission so security is become a number one issue in today's world Now, my friends, we have got simple devices. Every one of us now has smart meters, which can look at all the meter readings and bills. They're talking about AMR. Then there are smart plugs, which can take care of remote control of appliances. You've got panic buttons, which can send false alarm to emergency SVCS and you have got surveillance cameras and you've got street lights this is a massive security risk in the Singapore technical reference 64 which is the guideline for IOT security for a smart nation they say that in spite of having that, all that thing which is there is a huge security risk to Singapore. So if you ignore security, believe me, you are in big trouble. Do not ignore security. Do not ignore security. So my question is, I've given you all the problems, but what should cities do now? We, we want to do something now. The first thing to do is innovate. Innovate, my friends. OK. In innovation, Forget about technology. I've told you right in the beginning, technology will take care of itself. Technology is very well advanced. Innovation is basically the act or process of innovating a new method, idea, or product. It is not at all about technology. Okay? Look at the role of innovation number one and a new approach. When they were looking at smart Taipei, where they looked at the government as a platform and the city was the lab. So they looked at it 
from this side that was the the platform and this was the lab where they had 30 government agencies and taipei was selected as a smart city and that's where the pmo was done and they looked at 175 infrastructure centric and citizen centric proof of concept which was facilitated bottom up they looked at proactively engaging 400 plus ict vendors they provided all the technology they were the technology vendors and as far as the citizens were concerned they used 32000 citizen to look at the demand the market demand that was the innovation that was the new approach the second innovation which is proven technology in the proven technology they looked at everything from heating ventilation air conditioning system smart lighting they looked at uh, surveillance they looked at meeting rooms they looked at smart right lighting occupation occupancy sensors air quality sensors biometric access they looked at pressure sensors so they turned all the data into intelligence that was the second innovation the third innovation is emerging technology so here they looked at this is a very important thing that many people are working on in machine learning or deep learning then they look everyone is working in drones they're looking at 5g networks nowadays blockchain and augmented reality or virtual reality augmented reality adds digital element to a live view often by using camera and smartphone whereas virtual reality implies a complete immersion experience that shuts out the physical world take away number 4 remember if you want innovation you don't have to be tech savvy and go for the latest tech thing doesn't require that okay so innovation was the first thing second thing is collaboration let us collaborate let us not all be inventing the wheels let us collaborate so let us see a collaboration amongst the asian cities where asian cities look at all that various cities they are trying to collaborate with one another so that they can cooperatively build a smart city which is commercially viable which can facilitate collaboration with the partners so this is the type of network this is where it's not only one city but number of them combined together collaborates to get the best out of it this is another thing that happened and that is the vendor collaboration this was an initiative in china when four vendors p is ping an a is alibaba t was tencent h is huawei this was an initiative where four of these vendors combined together came up with their platform pingan came with their smart city platform alibaba came with alipay payment platform tencent came with a communication platform huawei came with hardware and network equipment platform and this with this for the path you know the chinese smart city initiative this was launched in 2018 at the smart city international expo where this is going to help 500 cities 
for 500 Chinese cities to become smart. And the leading people are these four companies, Ping An, Alibaba, Tencent, and Huawei. And they have created the smart city testing ground. The ecosystem, and the ecosystem has to be smart too. And these are the four points, and I'll end with that four points also. That is, there has to be a global ecosystem at play. Okay, the global ecosystem at play. After that, um, there should be intercity point of concerns. There should be special interest group and they should be addressed problem statements. So that is where these ecosystem has to be smart too. And I tell you, if you think you can do it alone, I don't think so. We have to collaborate. If we don't collaborate, we will die. That is my fifth takeaway. So what are the benefits of a smart city? As I told you, everyone is talking about it. This is a rapidly evolving concept. Each new city is trying to become smart. There are some of the key initiatives currently proving successful. First thing is the IT or infrastructure of IT that is going to become such that is going to make maximum connectivity. There will be more effective and democratic governance. So every citizen will be participating. Sustainability will be effective. So you will have the fantastic environment. There will be safety and security. So women, children, and elderly will feel secure. Health and education services will improve. Water and electricity supply will be facilitated. And there will be appropriate sanitation and waste management. And we'll be more and more dependent on public transport system. And the public transport system will become very efficient. And our housing will be affordable. And I told you right in the beginning, most of the urbanization is taking place and they will be sustainable too. They'll be able to cope up with a higher level of urban sustainability. So where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? Okay. This is our current state. We have got elderly people. We've got public housing. We need to operate with excellence. We need cost reduction and security. I told you that we are all going to become smart, whether it is in Taipei, whether it's in Darwin, Singapore, or in Jakarta. Everyone wants to become smart. The vendors are there, whether they are hardware, software, connectivity. I told you about the PATH initiative, the four vendors. They are the enablers. Artificial intelligence will be there. There will be all sorts of 3G, 4G, you name it, they will all be there. Then uh, there will be a low power van, there will be um, e SIMs will be there, blockchain sensors, variables, corporate venture capital will be there with a lot of innovation, talent incubators will be there for startups which will have mobile apps and analytics and sensors. And I told you AR and VR. So a lot of accelerators will be there, which will be the location, industry, and technology. And naturally, the business cluster, where most of the financial services will be there, the real estate, agriculture, energy. The future that is in current state and future, as I said, most of the things on the right will be the technology enablers. The in-between portions have disappeared. The same technology vendors will be there. The same startup will be there. Same business demand will be there. But there will be all these spark labs. And these are the smart cities that we cover. So the things which has disappeared will be these paths.
that crowdedness that you saw has all disappeared. So remember the four things I told you, my friends, the four things I told you, number one was the global eco ecosystems at play. Number two were the intercity pops. Number three were the special interest groups. Number four was to address the problem statement. I tell you, my friends, the cities will become smart. The cities will definitely become smart. And the question is that whether you will participate in the city. There are a lot of materials written on smart cities world. This is from Aviva that I mentioned. And it's, it's there in that, in that site, which tells you about the world trend reports. And with that, I have finished my presentation, Caroline. You Thank told me Akta. five minutes and I did 42 minutes. Yeah, I'm no, sorry. Yeah, that was brilliant. Just before we finish, has anyone got any questions? Please feel free to, to ask in the chat box um, or if you'd rather use your microphone, if you can just type in the chat box um, that you'd like to ask your question by the microphone, I'll unmute you. No questions? All right, well, if when we do send around the recording with the presentation slides, if you've got any questions at all, please feel free to, to ask. And just to 